Hello and welcome to the fifth screencast for OpenGL um, that I'll be doing. This one will be using GLUT for OpenGL interactions. And so what we'll be doing is seeing how we can do different keyboard inputs and mouse inputs in order to affect our programs. So the first things I'm going to go right into here is we just have a few different things for global state. Um, one is to determine what mouse button was pressed, the mouse's state, which key was pressed, which special button was pressed, and some modifiers, as well as the coordinates, coordinates of the mouse um, button. So going down here, we have some print statements um, using the print function that I showed you before. And this will just say what the mouse button is, the mouse state, key, pressed, special, modifiers, and that X and Y for the mouse. So going down, we're going to be introducing these four functions to you. Glut func keyboard func, which I introduced actually a little while ago uh, for convenience. So we'll start with that one. And each of these take a callback function. So I need to define a function here called window key. And in window key, I can go ahead and do whatever I need to um, with whatever key is pressed. So I've already defined this function here. Let's so paste it in, and we can take a look. So it takes an inside chart key as well as an int x and y. Um, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to take um, the modifiers, and that's just an integer. Um, we're going to escape on exit key. Then you can check for whichever key is pressed by doing a comparison. So you could say if key is equal to A or uppercase A. Then we're just going to say that we've pressed negative 10 for whatever reason. Otherwise, it goes ahead and it sets the ASCII equivalent. The, if the current modifiers is shift, then we'll just say we are using the shift key. Or if it's control, we'll just say we're using control. Finally, we end with glut post redisplay, which forces out um, to redraw to the screen. So if we go ahead and make that, let me run it. Here's our functionality down here, mouse state, key, all these kinds of things. So now if I push the A key, you can see that this changes to negative 10. Or if capital A, I'm holding shift here, so the shift showed up as negative 10. If I push control, it doesn't do anything, but as soon as I push a normal um, letter or whatever number, each of those changes. So, um, that's a little bit uh, with the keyboard funk. So now let's drop down and look at keyboard special. Alright, we'll go back and put it right below this one. So, I'm doing the same thing with the current modifiers. You don't have to do that. You can actually do that anywhere to check where it doesn't have to be inside of one of these uh, callbacks or you can be used somewhere else and you can find out when your user pushing uh, control or shift and I believe the uh, command as well um, window key etc apple key so right here we're just checking for glut key right Right here we're just checking for the F1 key. Once again checking for shift or control in those uh, modifiers. So not doing a whole lot, um, just checking those out and you can obviously do a lot more. So right key was pushed or if I'm pushing F1 those are pressed. If I'm holding shift while I'm pressing those or I'm holding control while I'm pressing those um, that should work as well. So. You know, it's just uh, just another little easy thing you can do um, to determine the special keys that are pressed. Moving right along to the uh, glut mouse func with the definition of window mouse, um, which we'll be using for our callback. So going in here, we have a the it button, which is the button of the mouse is pressed, the state of the button, as well as an uh, X and Y. And so we're going to see if it's the left button, we're going to say left, right, the right. We're going to have a different uh, if statement here for whether it's up or down um, for when that button is pressed. So uh, let's go ahead and make this. And so if I click left button down, you can see it's left and down. As soon as I lift it, it goes to up. Same with right. 
and well, then I left it it's, uh, up. So um, let's go ahead and check out the final one here. So that's this glat passive motion funk. So this is actually called any time that um, things that are passive motion are happening, specifically the mouse is moving, um, is, is the one that you're most likely going to be using this for. So it passes in the x and y coordinates of the mouse and says mouse x, mouse y, and then we just redisplay those. So if we make that here and we move around, you can see the coordinates of the mouse here. Um, so the, the upper left hand corner is the 0, 0 in OpenGL and that goes down to the far right so you can see 450, 500 is the lower bounds which is what we defined as our global window height and width right there. So that's pretty much it for uh, GLUT interaction. Um, you probably wouldn't use this for like gaming, you'd probably want to use like SDL or QT However, if you're just doing something really quick and you just want to test something out, it works pretty well. If you're making a very simple game, it works really well. But if you're like a scientist or something, it works well um, for scientific data. You don't need a whole lot more interaction. So um, that's that. I hope you enjoyed this screencast. And uh, next time we'll be actually starting into 3D objects. Talk to you later. Bye.